When looking back through time, clowns have always brought joy and laughter to many an audience. One of the most famous and most well respected has to be Joseph Grimaldi. Joseph Grimaldi was born on the 18th of December 1778 in Clare Market, London. He was an English actor, comedian and dancer and was one of the most famous clowns of all time. His father was an Italian actor and ballet master. The two first appeared on stage together when Joseph was just three. By the age of six, the press considered him to be a prominent stage performer, and at the age of nine, Joseph was to become a breadwinner for the family, as his father had died. Joseph went on to become the most influential comic actor and celebrated clown of all time. His innovative methods transformed comic theatre, leaving a legacy still seen in pantomimes today. Grimaldi was responsible for changing the look of the clown from a character dressed in rags to the now white-faced, red nose, huge mouth, dressed in a costume of ruffs, tassels with diamonds and circles, playing the chief rascal with slapstick humour and acrobatic skills, miming and juggling. At times, Grimaldi was seen to include live animals in his performance with great success. In 1806, Grimaldi played the clown in London's Covent Garden. The pantomime was Harlequin and Mother Goose. It was set up at short notice and very basic compared to other pantomimes of the time. It opened on Boxing Day and was so successful it played for 92 nights. Grimaldi was to say later that he thought it would be the worst pantomime he had ever played. Due to its success, Grimaldi was booked to play across England and Europe. In 1817 in Birmingham, it was to be the first place that Joseph and his son J.S. Grimaldi had performed together outside of London. It was late May slash early June that they performed scenes and songs from several pantomimes, Don Juan, Mother Goose, Robinson Crusoe and a mixed bag of music comedy and tragedy. It was Grimaldi's new comic pantomime Castles in the Air that received the most rapturous applause. In 1823 Grimaldi and his son played once more in Birmingham from August through to September. By now Grimaldi was suffering from frequent bouts of illness and found it difficult to perform as he had done when he was young. They performed for a week, performances from Cohenzoa, the rival Indians, Puck and the Black Puddings, it was a hit. Grimaldi felt rejuvenated and better than he had in a long time. Grimaldi appeared on stage twice more in 1828, with farewell concerts in March at Sadler's Wells and June in Drury Lane. He found it difficult to stand and had to sit on a chair for most of his performance. His body had started to deteriorate. He suffered from a respiratory condition and his joints were badly damaged. Before he died, he wrote his memoirs which were later edited by Charles Dickens. He died in 1837 and was buried in Islington, London. Every first Sunday in February, the Holy Trinity Church in London holds a memorial service for Grimaldi. Clowns from all over the world gather here to listen to the service in full clown costume and makeup. When the service is over, they perform their acts for other people. Through them, Joseph Grimaldi, the clown of clowns, lives on. Grimaldi concluded in his memoirs in 1836, ending with this verse. Life is a game we are bound to play. The wise enjoy it, fools grow sick of it. Lovers we find have the stakes to pay. The winners may laugh, for that's the trick of it. And so ends the fascinating story of history's most iconic of clowns, Joseph Grimaldi.